Champions, Mr. Chambers here, and yes, I'm wearing safety goggles and a apron so I don't get messy. However, this is not a science video. It happens to be a reading video. A reading of One Day in the Desert. Today we are on chapter five of the story, and while this may not be science, we're still learning a lot about desert creatures and desert plants and how they all survive in the desert. There's been weather, there's been animals, all kinds of things here in the habitat that is the desert. So hopefully we've been enjoying and learning along the way some fun facts about the desert that we live in. Without further ado, you know the drill as I'm reading through take note and afterwards you'll have five to ten questions to answer about this story and i just realized now that my microphone was nowhere near my mouth so hopefully you heard me as i read through that worst case scenario mr chambers will have to record this all over again chapter five the lion walked into the Palo Verde bushes. The peccaries squealed in fright and trotted out into the terrible sunshine. In a cloud of dust, they sped into the dry riverbed and frightened the roadrunner. He ran out from under the overhang and flew into the saguaro forest on the far side of the dry river. The pigs hid under the embankment where the roadrunner had been. Embankment. That's a term that's been highlighted here in today's reading. It's a term we've seen several times throughout the story. But what does it mean? For this question, I believe there's pictures that you have to see to try to fit which is the best picture for the term embankment. The injured lion could not chase the peccaries. He lifted his head smelled the sweet piglets, and climbed up the Indian trail till he was at the hut. Birdwing and her mother were sleeping. He stared at them and crouched. Slinking low, he moved to a bucket, drank long and gratefully, then lay down in the doorway of the hut. The temperature climbed one more degree. The birds stopped singing. Even the cicadas who love hot weather and drum louder and faster in the heat could no longer endure the fiery temperature. They stopped making sounds with their feet and wings and sat still. So the cicada is not pictured here, but you've probably heard cicadas before. Anytime that it gets really hot, you might hear the cicadas. <laughs> It's quite obnoxious, all of that buzzing and hissing that they do. Hey, future Alan, you've got a lot of editing to do. Don't just upload the video as is. Thank you. <clears throat> the Gila woodpecker flew into his hole in the giant saguaro. Below him, so here's the woodpecker below him in this giant saguaro cactus with all of its spines and arms. In one of his old nests sat the sparrow-sized elf owl. He opened his beak and lifted his feathers. So when the owl opens his beak and lifts his feathers, what is he doing? Same thing the woodpecker was doing or the road runner earlier. Birdwing was awakened by thirst. She tipped one of the water buckets and drank deeply. The desert was so quiet that she became alarmed. Clouds were racing toward Mount Scorpion. They were black and purple. Constant flashes of lightning illuminated them from within. She crept to the back of the hut and lay down beside her mother. She closed her eyes. At 1.20 p.m., the temperature reached 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.4 degrees Celsius. 
This hour on July 10th was the hottest hour on record at the bottom of Mount Scorpion. Even the well-insulated honeypot ants could not tolerate the temperature. They ran toward the entrance of their labyrinth near a pack rat nest by the hut. Some managed to get underground in the caverns where sister ants hung from the ceilings. Forager honeypot ants store the sweets from plants they have gathered in the bellies of hanging ants, some of which become as round as balloons and as big as marbles. The last two foraging ants ran across the hot soil to get home, but they shriveled and died in seconds. The peccaries under the embankment dug into the earth to, to find coolness. All right, that wraps it up for chapter five today. Thank you for listening, enjoying the story, and I will see you in the next video as we move into chapter six. Remember, there's five to 10 questions to answer using the Google Forms in Google Classroom. Stay awesome, and I'll see you again soon.